Good evening. I want to welcome you to our Good Friday service as we provide a virtual service for everyone today. As we complete our Lenten journey and prepare for sunrise service on Sunday, April the 4th at 8.30 in our church, also streaming at 10 o'clock, I want to share a, a service, a sermon with you. And my scripture is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 19. And I would title this sermon tonight, The Outlandishness of the Lenten Season. Before I get started, I wanted to share, and I'm going to share a couple of uh, songs by our wonderful solo singers within our church. I'm going to share three with you. We have many talented people. But I'm going to open the service up with a song uh, by Rita Dixon, and it's one titled, I on the Sparrow. She has her son Gabe also playing the keyboard. His eye is on the sparrow. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Jesus is my portion. A constant, constant friend is he. His eyes on the Take it home, Gabriel. And I sing because I'm happy. Put your hands together. I sing because.
thank Rita for that beautiful singing. Go with me now as I turn to Scripture. I'm going to put it up for you to read. It's from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. And this Scripture makes me think about the season of Lent when we're giving up things. And to the world, what we do seems very foolish and crazy. But there's a rhyme and a reason for it. Listen to Paul as, as he talks to the church at Corinth. He says, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. I don't know about you, but sometimes I wonder how much wisdom there is in the world today. The Lent season that brings us up to today, to Good Friday. It's a solemn season in the church, and it seems to be foolishness to the world. Some of the churches now, these New Testament churches, don't even understand what Lent is about. They don't practice it. They don't know the meaning of it. They don't realize how important it is to strengthen our walk, our belief, and our faith in God. But it's meant to prepare us for this week of passion that leads us to the cross at Calvary. It's a time to evaluate our behaviors. It's a time to look at our habits, our commitments, and to adjust them to make us better Christians. You know, cheap grace or easy grace is not good grace. We need to be committed to followers of Christ and be good disciples. In our scripture for tonight from Corinthians, it finds us reading about a topsy-turvy world and it suggests that this Lenten season is the time when Christians should be preparing themselves for Easter. You know, Paul's declaration in 1 Corinthians is it's not about rising to a super spirituality. Lent is the season in the church when we actively celebrate the worldly perception or the worldly perceived view of Jesus as a doomed entry into Jerusalem and then his anticipated criminal conviction and his cruel crucifixion of the cross. That's what historians and the world see it all as. So if you talk about a crazy or weird holiday, that probably would top it off if you were looking at it from the eyes of the world without the Holy Spirit to discern to you what it means. You see, the Christian life has the expectation of celebration throughout the Lenten season. And we get excited about all the activities that we're going to have around Easter. It's a joyful occasion for us, whereas the world sees it as Jesus being crucified, a very painful, agonizing death. We celebrate it because we know that that cross is the doorway to eternal salvation. So many people look at the cross as a tragedy, but we look at it as a blessing. You know, on Easter morning, we know that he is resurrected. Lent is a season of sadness for many. It's a season of repentance. It's a season of looking back on uh, lost behaviors or missed opportunities. But with the assurance of the power of the divine spirit and the intentions of providence by God, you see, these strange events become a new and never seen before power source for all of God's children. This last incarnation of God's word, which is Jesus Christ in flesh and blood and spirit, it was the most difficult to understand and comprehend by the world. Even for the religious leaders, and many of them were lost and they did not understand it. Even when Jesus tried to explain it, they couldn't understand. So Paul's latest vision of God's power and presence, it suggests that it was sacrificial love. And it was a long-term vision of God's, his way and his wisdom. From the beginning of time, God had this plan that it might be the next big thing, the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And yet Paul proclaimed that God made foolish the wisdom of the world in verse 20. You see, the glory of Lent leading us up to today on Good Friday, it's not just about giving up chocolate or giving up soft drinks or alcohol, red meat or 
any of these things for a short time or even looking forward to an Easter egg hunt. You see, the glory of Lent is welcoming and accepting a completely new kind of power on this earth and a new kind of love. I don't know if you realize it, but you and I are God's love letters. That's what the Apostle Paul writes, written not with ink, but with the love called the Holy Spirit, not on tablets and stones, but across the pages of our hearts. You see, the divine craziness is that God's language of love is you and me. That's what's so hard for us to understand, isn't it? Paul's proclamation that he declares that God has made foolish the wisdom of the world. In verse 20, instead of giving yet another set of miraculous signs to the Jews, instead of giving a logical argument, God, our creator and our defender, sent us a redeemer. And his name is Jesus Christ. You know, I want to pause right here. And I want to take a minute just to listen to a song, a beautiful song by Vicki Hamill. And the title of the song is Defender. Listen to it with me. Vicki is going to come up and she's going to share with us a solo. you've even gone to win my war you come back with the head of my enemy you come back and you call it my victory home you go becomes my greatest defense. It leads me from the dry wilderness. And all I did was pray. All I did was worship. All I did was bow. Stay still, stay All I did was bow 
All I need to do is worship I'm just gonna bow down I'm just gonna stay still thank Vicki for that beautiful singing. Paul offered a once and for all and completely crazy response to the question of God's saving presence. Paul says we proclaim Christ crucified and he tells us this is a stumbling block to the Jews and it's foolishness to the Gentiles. Christ crucified. God's act of love in human history. It's, and his love that seems foolish, but is wise. It's an action that seems weak, but yet it's strong. Christ crucified. Our Lenten confirmation of God's love language for humanity. Jesus' slow Lenten march to the cross. It's not a parade. It's the divine taking each of us by the hand, flesh and blood, muscle and bone and leading us away from our personal Golgothas so we might encounter the life eternal that God intends for us. That's a great thing for us to celebrate, isn't it? And we need to look forward to it. So during this time, as we go into the Holy Weekend, as we celebrate the sacrifice, we look back on this Lenten journey as we are approaching the end of Good Friday. And we know that the sacrifice Jesus made this representative of this day, that he was crucified, it reminds us that Christ paid a price for our salvation. You know, grace is not cheap. It may be free for us, but there was a big price that was paid. So we need to be reminded that we are redeemed by Christ, and it came with a very big price. That's what the season of Lent is all about. The 40 days in the wilderness, Jesus being tempted, you and I giving up, sacrificing. That's foolishness to the world. The big Christ story, the ridiculous road that Paul offered by proclaiming a Savior who was weak enough to be crucified, yet strong enough to redeem all the world that followed his way. Paul goes on to share these strange directions in his writings more proof that God's words are foolishness to those without the divine leading by the Holy Spirit. Listen to some of these things that the world calls crazy, but yet we, the children of God, fully understand when we read Scripture. The way up is down. The way in is out. The way first is last. The way of success is service. The way of attainment is relinquishment. The way of strength is weakness. The way of security is vulnerability. The way of protection is forgiveness. The way of life is the way of death. You know, realizing that God's ways are considered foolishness to the world, that should encourage us to seek to grow closer to God and to be filled with and led by His Holy Spirit. May you use this season this Good Friday, this Holy Week, Sunday, Easter Sunday, when we celebrate with families, but more importantly, when we celebrate with our church family, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. May you learn to trust His Holy Spirit, to trust the story, and to live the story of hope and grace, and share it and be a living testimony to the world. I want to close our service with a beautiful song by Destiny Lane, and it's titled Hosanna. May God's blessings be upon you this Good Friday. I want to close with a prayer, and then I'm going to share uh, Destiny's beautiful song. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you so much that we can celebrate Good Friday. To the world, it seems foolishness. To the world, it seems agonizing. It seems like suffering. It seems like failure for Jesus to be crucified on the cross, but to us, your followers, your believers, your children that are filled with your Holy Spirit, we understand that it is the ultimate sign of your love for us, that from the beginning of creation, you had a plan that you would come to this earth 
in the form of a man and that you would take on the sins of the world and you would die on the cross to redeem each and every one of us. Father, we know that no matter what we've done, you have died for our sins. You've redeemed us and you forgive us. And Father, we are so thankful for your mercy and your grace. May you continue to bless us and may we glorify your holy name. For it's in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. I hope you enjoy this beautiful song, Hosanna, by Destiny Lane.
We thank Destiny so much for that beautiful singing. As we close, I want to remind you and invite you to come and participate with us tomorrow on Saturday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. We have our annual youth sunrise service, and this is where the kids come out to the fellowship hall. They celebrate Easter with um, egg hunt, um, egg paintings. They have lunch, uh, do some fellowship, and do some spiritual scriptural reading as well. So join us for that. On Sunday morning, we invite you to be a part of our worship service. We're going to have sunrise service at 8.30. I call it City Slicker service. Uh, we're going to have breakfast in the fellowship hall. Uh, we're going to have a, a short devotion sermon in the fellowship hall. We're going to have communion available. We're going to go out on the grounds right at the fellowship hall at the cross. We're going to do some uh, responsive reading at 9 o'clock. Uh, we'll finish up about 9.15, a few minutes after. The kids are going to go and have an egg hunt uh, right in the parking lot across the road. If it's raining or bad weather, we'll do it inside. Then we're going to finish up and we're going to go back into the church at 9.45, 9.50. Start our Sunday morning worship. We should be finished by 11. We're going to have singing during the 11 o'clock service. We're also going to do communion during the 11 o'clock service. We're doing the two services because we realize that some people have uh, scheduled events, family gatherings, so we want to make sure that you can worship on Sunday morning and celebrate the resurrection. And if you can't be with us physically, you can also watch us virtually, online, YouTube, or Facebook. We'll start uh, streaming at a probably five minutes to 10, 10 minutes to 10, and we'll be done by 11 o'clock. So we want you to participate and celebrate the resurrection. May God bless you on this good Friday.